everyone, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you all the books I gave five stars in the year of 2021. So I have a shelf on Goodreads titled Five Star Reads in 2021. These books didn't necessarily come out in 2021, I just read them in 2021. I'll be creating a new shelf titled Five Star Reads in 2022 as I read books in 2022. So I'm going to go in the order in which I read them. And some of these books were mentioned in my all-time favorite reads of 2021 video that I just posted. I'll link that up here and down there. So because of that, I'm not going to talk about each individual book and its premise. I'm more so just going to be sharing the book and telling you my thoughts on them because there are 36 books that I'm going to be talking about today. And reading 105 books and 36 of them being five-star reads, it's not terrible. It's a decent amount, so I'm pretty proud of myself. So the first book I read in 2021 one, I ended up giving five stars and that is The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelitis. I really enjoyed this book and it was a great first read for 2021. Spoiler alert, the first book I read in 2021 was five stars and the last book I read in 2021 was five stars. So I would say I had a pretty great reading year. This book was the book that definitely got me hooked on reading because before I read this book, I had not read a book for pleasure in probably five years. So I'm really happy that I picked this up as my first read. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I was seeing this book everywhere. I didn't know what it was about. The cover looked intriguing and so I bought it and I read it. I went into this book not knowing anything and I think that's the reason why I really love going into books not knowing anything. So because of that, I just got hooked right away and I feel like this is a book that you either love or you hate. I personally loved it after I read it and finished it because I read it so quickly. I lent it to my mom and she also read it very quickly and absolutely loved it. So if you have not read this book yet, please pick this up. This is a great book and also a great first read in the new year. The next two books I'm going to talk about, I also mentioned in my all-time favorite reads of 2021, so I'm not going to talk about them for too long, but that's Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens and The Guest List by Lucy Folly. This book is a very suspenseful thriller. It takes place on an island and it's great. This book I guess you could say it's more literary fiction and the first 70 to 80 pages are character building and start out really slow So if you can get past that, please give this book a chance because it is so so good and the movie comes out in June of 2022 literally this year. I am so excited so please give this book a chance if you can get past the character building It is so so worth it Next, we have Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This book was absolutely phenomenal, and then I watched the TV show and hated it. Because I absolutely loved Mia in this book, but in the TV show, I just, I could not stand her. I don't know if it was the actress that played her, because I've seen Carrie Washington in other movies, and she was great, but her smug face that she made all the time with Mia, I could not stand. So because of that, I didn't like the show but I loved the book. It's kind of similar to where the crawdads sing in very slow burn, but also like not slow. I don't know how to describe it. All I know is that it's a fantastic book and I couldn't put it down. Next, we have two books from the selection series. We have the first book, The Selection, and the third book, The One. Both of these were great, super fun, quick, easy YA reads, and I enjoyed the series. Would I read it again? Probably not, and when people ask me about this series, I recommend the first three, and then the second two, honestly, are so repetitive that you could read without. But these two I really, really enjoyed. Next we have the Firefly Lane series. So we have Firefly Lane and Fly Away. Both were fantastic. I DNF'd the series on Netflix, but the books were great. I feel like if you watch the show first and then you read the books, you hate the books. But if you read the books first, you hate the show. And that has a lot to do with the fact that they are just vastly different. The show should not be based off the book because it literally things that happen in the show don't happen in the book and vice versa so did not care for the show but absolutely loved this series it was really great it could have been fine as a standalone but i'm not mad about the sequel obviously next we have the perfect marriage by geneva rose i really enjoyed this book i will say though that it's very vulgar lots of cuss words i think the f word is in this book probably over 200 times it's used a lot and usually that bothers me when a book lacks vocabulary that has to use the F word but in this book I seriously didn't mind it. I will say though that it's very inaccurate with the way that the justice system works but other than that it was a great book and I really enjoyed it. I did not see the ending coming and because of that I gave it five stars. 
The next book I don't have because I gave it back to my sister, but that is Reboot by Amy Tintera. It's my first sci-fi book that I read in 2021, and although sci-fi is a genre that I don't typically gravitate towards, I wanted to read this one because it's more of a YA sci-fi so it wasn't super scientific and hard to understand and the concept of the story was pretty cool. I did enjoy it a lot. I read the second as well but I did not give that one five stars but Reboot was really really good and I highly recommend reading that. The next book is The X Talk. This was my first romance read in 2021 and I really enjoyed this book. It's an enemies to lovers, fake lovers type story and it was fantastic. It takes place in Seattle which I love because that's where I live. They work for the public radio and it's just it's not really a story that you hear a lot about with that type of work or career that they have so I really enjoyed this book and although it was my first romance that I read in 2021 I had read other romances in my life and I had not read anything even close to this so I definitely enjoyed this a lot. Then I read The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai. Desai, I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name. I will say I think this is my all-time favorite romance that I read in 2021, not including Colleen Hoover because she's not even on the same spectrum because she's so fantastic. But I did really enjoy this book. I thought it was super cute. The cover is stunning and I just really enjoyed this book a lot. And Daisy, it follows Daisy and Liam. Daisy is Indian, which I thought was super cool because it talked a little bit about the culture of an Indian woman and I really enjoyed that. So I love this book a lot. I will recommend this book to anyone because it's just so cute but it's not too like spicy or smutty or anything like that. So I really enjoyed this one. Next we have Every Last Fear by Alex Finlay. I really, really enjoyed this book. This book is definitely a controversial one based off the way that it talks about Mexico but that personally didn't bother me and I loved this book. I could not put it down. When I wasn't reading this book I was thinking about it and when I was reading it I could not put it down. It was so good. This is definitely up there in my top reads of 2021 because it was just so fantastic. I will recommend this thriller to anyone that I talk to because this one was just so so good. Then obviously we have to talk about The Queen. This book was fantastic. I gave a lot of Kristen Hanna's books five stars this year but this is definitely my all-time favorite read in 2021. I'm keeping this book for the rest of my life. I'm going to reread this over the years and it's just I could go on and on about this book. Clearly I talked about this book for over four minutes in my favorite reads of 2021 video so I'm gonna keep it short and sweet but I just please read this book. It's a sad book but it's so worth the read. So eye-opening, so rewarding. It's just it's fantastic. Next we have The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. I really enjoyed this book. It was my first paranormal read and I was hooked from the start. I was a little bit nervous about it being too scary but honestly it did not scare me at all and I I always thought I scared easily but maybe I don't because no horror books have actually made me scared. Actually, The House at the Bottom of the Lake, I will say The House at the Bottom of the Lake by Josh Mallerman made me a little bit spooked, but didn't actually like scare me too, too bad. Whereas this book did not scare me at all. So if I find this book in a hardcover, I'm going to buy it because I have The Broken Girls in hardcover and Simone St. James newest book that's coming out this year is hardcover and I need this in hardcover. So if I find it in a hardcover, I'm going to buy it. It's got to match my other books or I'm going to throw a fit. Next we have Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. This is my first Lisa Jewell book that I read and it got me hooked on her. Also I will say there's a little bit of animal cruelty in this book. I'm not trying to sound like a piece of shit but if it's like a cat or a dog then I can't do it but in this book it's hamsters so I'm not trying to sound cold and heartless but I mean it's hamsters. Plus it's not too too graphic so if you're able to get past that then it's fine. Like there's a book called Behind Closed Doors that I really wanted to read but I've been told that the animal cruelty scene is very graphic and I, I'm sorry I can't do it. I can't do very graphic animal cruelty with cats or dogs. I just maybe horses too. That's that's one that would bother me as well. Hamsters I'm sorry but it's a hamster. Then we have The Hunting Wives by Mae Cobb. This was a great one. I really enjoyed this one. I will say though that there's a lot of infidelity in this book and it made me very very uncomfortable that I was only going to give it 4 to 4.5 stars but the ending just made me crap my pants. I was like what the heck just happened and because of that I bumped it up to a 5. Also I'm not trying to brag or anything but I posted my review of this book when it first came out on Instagram and Mae Cobb commented on my post so that was really freaking cool 
She has a new book coming out in 2022. I guess that's this year, wow. But she has a new book coming out later this year and you bet your bottom dollar I'm gonna read it. Next is My Lovely Wife by Samantha Downing. If I find this book on a hardcover, I'm also buying it because I have For Your Own Good in a hardcover. And I don't know why this book in a hardcover is so hard to find. I think I have it on Amazon, but there's only so many copies and it's like, they like jacked up the price to a ridiculous amount. So if I ever come across this in a hardcover, I'm buying it. But this book was amazing. Husband and Wife Serial Killers. You do not have to tell me twice. I read this book so freaking quick. It's kind of a thick book. At least it was for me in the moment of me reading it. 371 pages, which is like your average amount of pages. But when I first picked this book up, I was like, damn, that's a lot of pages. And I flew through this book. I flew through it. It was so good and I highly recommend anyone reading this. Samantha Downing, I've only read two of her books so far, but I'm loving her writing style. She's just fantastic. This book was fantastic. Next we have The Great Alone, also by Kristen Hanna, also by the queen herself, Kristen Hanna. This book takes place in Washington as well as Alaska, obviously The Great Alone. Alaska, I've been to, so I kind of had like this picture in my head of what Alaska was because when I went it was freezing cold and just raining and gross and I didn't care for it. But this book actually made me want to go to Alaska, like who am I? I hate the cold, I hate snow, but it had me wanting to go to Alaska. I would never go to Alaska, but this book made Alaska seem really beautiful and peaceful and it's also a very sad book with some of the topics in it, but it was great. I read it so so fast. I will say I was gonna give it a four star and then I don't know if it's just who I am as a person but I felt like Kristen Hanna deserved a five star so I bumped it up to a five star but I still really enjoyed it and I'm definitely keeping this and going to be rereading it throughout the next couple of years. Then we have Alex Michaelitis' other book, The Maidens. This book I will say I was a little hesitant going into it because of all the Greek mythology and I don't care for Greek mythology at all. I find it very confusing and hard to follow but this book was not bad. It was not bad at all. I will say the ending is very far-fetched and kind of unrealistic, but honestly, I didn't care. This book was so great. I pre-ordered it and read it when it came out and I cannot wait for his next book because I'm already ordering it. Whatever he's writing on his little computer right now, I'm buying it. Next, we have three books by Riley Sager and I'm just gonna talk about them all right now because I love Riley Sager. We have Home Before Dark. We have The Last Time I Lied and Survive the Night. All of these were great. I read Survive the Night first and then I don't remember the order in which I read the other ones. I know Home Before Dark was the last one I read and Home Before Dark was absolutely amazing. And I'm thinking The Last Time I Lied is my favorite Riley Sager. It's hard to pick, but that one has to take the cake. It was so good. This one is like paranormal haunted house vibes and it's really, really good. Perfect book to read in October if you have not read it yet. Next we have The Push by Ashley Adrian Audrin. I'm not sure how to pronounce her name. She's a debut author and I'm just saying based off of this book and it's a massive amount of positive feedback and reviews that it got, a lot of people are going to be reading whatever book she comes out with next. I know I am. This book was amazing. It was very dark and graphic, but honestly, I could put it down. Like you would think with a book being super dark and graphic that you'd be like, okay, Okay, I've had enough. No, I couldn't put it down. So that's that. Read this book if you haven't. Then obviously we have The Unhoneymooners. This book was fantastic. I read it. I think I stayed up to like 1am to finish it, which I never do because I have a toddler who wakes up at the crack ass of dawn, but it was so good. So good. I couldn't put it down. I had marked my spot on where I was going to stop for the night and then I got to it and I was like, oh, I only have like 100 to 75 pages left. I'm going to finish it. So I did and it was great. So cute. So funny. So so lighthearted. I loved it. I'm keeping this book forever. Next, I'm just going to talk about all the Colleen Hoovers that I've read this year because all of them I have given five stars. So we have Verity, very dark and suspenseful thriller with a little bit of romance in it. And I was totally feeling this book. It was a little graphic in some spots, but I freaking loved it. Then we have my most recent read, which is Regretting You, my f absolute favorite Colleen Hoover. Then we have November 9, Ugly Love. I freaking bawled my eyes out and it ends with us also cried not as hard as ugly love but also cried next we have local woman missing by mary kubica kubica this was my first mary kubica book my only mary kubica book but i want to read the rest of her work because i just really love this book i read it really quickly really small so it's extremely fast paced and i was totally loving this book it was fantastic 
and also the ending not very predictable which I love then we have Lisa Jewell the night she disappeared I pre-ordered this one and read it when it came out and although September was a very busy month for me because I was planning my son's birthday and I was in like a massive I don't want to say rut because whenever I had time to read I would pick this up I just wouldn't read very much at a time because I was so exhausted so it did take me a little bit to read this book but it was so so good it was so so good. I just, I guess I hadn't read anything like this and I just, I loved the way that Lisa Jewell writes and it was really, really spooky but like it didn't scare me. Just the, the idea behind the book was spooky so I really enjoyed this book. Then we have Alice Feeney, Rock, Paper, Scissors. This book is also really small so it's super fast paced. I was really enjoying this book. I was hooked from the first page. I saw someone on a Facebook group say that she was reading this book and asks when it gets better because it's so slow and boring. And I don't think she was talking about this book. There's no way because this book is extremely fast paced and hooked me from the first page. So I don't know what book she was talking about, but it sure as hell was not this one. And then of course we have more of the queen herself, Kristen Hanna and True Colors. I loved this one. This one was great. I want to read all of her books eventually. So anytime I come across a book, I just pick it up and buy it. So I did not know what this book was about. I had seen it some places, but I had never actually read the premise or knew what it was about at all. So I went into it blindly and I loved it. It was so good. I saw a couple reviews after I'd finished the book that said that this wasn't her best work and it was like a story that they've read multiple times and maybe I'm just not very seasoned with my reading because I just started reading at the beginning of 2021. I didn't think this book was like anything I've read before and I really enjoyed it. So next we have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and Good Girl Bad Blood the first and second book in the Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy. I did enjoy the third book, but it wasn't a five-star read for me. This book was absolutely fantastic. This book was absolutely fantastic. I caught myself crying. I I mean, I can't say I'm not sure why because I do know why. I just was not expecting to cry in a YA thriller, suspense thriller book, but it is what it is. Fantastic trilogy. I do not usually read YA, but I could not stop reading these. I could not put them down. They were so freaking good. Highly recommend these two. If you're going to read any book that I mentioned on this list, it's got to be this series or The Four Winds. I will not have it any other way. It has to be one of those. And those are all the books that I gave five stars in the year of 2021. I'm pretty impressed with myself. I thought that I just fly through ratings like I just give them willy-nilly like oh you get five stars you get five stars but to have read 105 books in 2021 and only 36 of them being five stars that's actually not terrible that's like this much so I'm pretty proud of myself if you've read any of the books that I mentioned please tell me what your thoughts about them were in the comments and let me know if you're gonna pick up any of these books thank you so much for watching please subscribe and turn on post notifications to be notified every time I upload and give this video a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Bye.